get go on it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Stick those yep. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Souders along with Harley Neal again this week. Continuing where we left off last week. Hopefully, we will get on some fish for you guys tonight. But uh, back out here on the high river um, on a big ledge. Uh, this is just a kind of a deep water ledge. It comes down through here, and uh, we're spot locked. Once again, there is like no current. But uh, but uh, last week had a lot going on with dragon baits and a lot of questions. So want to just kind of come up here, take it easy, talk to you guys, interact with you guys, and hopefully uh, catch some fish as they meander back and forth on this ledge. So we're gonna see what happens. We got. Uh, We got the goods on there tonight. Uh, got some skipjack and some gizzard shad. I didn't uh, didn't fool with keeping them alive tonight. I wish I would have, but uh, I brought the tank with me in case we got into a bunch of them. But didn't really get into a bunch of them. Um, so we just throw them on ice. But you did catch one shad that was about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, caught one. Got one uh, Got one shad about 12 inches. He, uh, we got six ounces on there, just kind of spread them out. Got three ounces out the back. And uh, very little current. <laughs> very, very <laughs> little current. Um, uh, this is less current than we had last week. Uh, literally 0 0.1, 0 0.2 maybe. Um, so just actually coming out here to enjoy it and enjoy a beautiful night so see what happens most grant says no live shad no unless unless we had them little three inch guys that'd be the only ones so okay bobby uh, parker has a question hey chris if i put a hand controlled trolling motor on the back of my boat and used it to troll would that scare away fish versus putting it on the front let me answer this one bobby it's easier to pull a chain than push a chain you get a lot more control, and if it's a trolling motor, it don't matter unless your boat's 80 feet long. Um, he's he's right. Um, if you put a if you put a trolling motor on the back of it, or or wherever you you know, I've seen I've seen a lot of people put trolling motors on the sides of their boat to help uh, keep their boat straight while they're drifting and and uh, pulling or whatever. So, you know, it won't be as easy as if you have it on the front of your boat, but. Um, but it won't be bad either. <laughs> Roger says Ohio Lake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about right, uh, buddy. It's uh, it's been rough. It's been kind of slow. Fishing has been sporadic. Um, you know, you come here. As soon as we got off the show last week, we ended up, uh, you know, just saying the heck with it, spot locking, and we ended up catching nine fish nine uh, biggest one being 40 pounds so littlest one was 10 yeah so slay fast it's just been really sporadic and then i fished thursday and friday for two two full days and didn't catch but two little fish so um hopefully as the evening turns on that cold front has kind of died off and and we're hoping that these fish are going to turn back on I just heard something. I had a way we hit the boat, and I thought we had a pole rattling back there. So last week, I gave an invitation out to everybody that was watching the show about if you had a channel, a YouTube channel, um, small, big, uh, didn't matter, and you was able to make it out on a Tuesday evening and fish with us, uh, that you was more than welcome to be invited. I did uh, get some people that were were um, asking. Uh, I'll have a new guest with me next week. Um, his name is Chris, but uh, I wanted to mention it early in this show uh, to let people know and give you guys a heads up. Just shoot me a message and uh, we'll get you guys scheduled to come on here with me. And I did something special for Chris today since he already blowed it and told you all about it. If we don't get enough attention, I'll have to play this. Have to play this? No, no. Oh, my phone's all the way yeah. down. Yeah, don't. <laughs> you won't be able to play it. It's, yeah, well, I'm going to turn it up no. for a second here. No. Ah! <laughs> Go to my YouTube channel. It'll be on there. <laughs> uh, so, as always, if you guys got any questions or uh, comments, you know, make sure you're 
uh, leaving them down in the comments section. <laughs> yeah, I, I, how do you pull this back up? A little easier here. I'm excited. Um, the uh, father and son that'll be with me next week. Um, his name is Chris. So I'm excited about getting them on the boat. Um, they've got a small YouTube channel. Uh, they do a lot of lake channel cat fishing. So I'm excited about getting them on here, getting them out here on the river. Hopefully we can put some fish in the boat uh, for them, you know, next Tuesday, whether it be on the show or, or afterwards, but uh, hopefully we can do something with them. You want a question? Yes. Earl Wellington says, hey, Chris and Harley, do you think the moon makes much difference in the fish bite? So uh, I am a big believer in the moon. Um, uh, and, it, and it goes, I'm kind of torn. You know, I always say go fishing and you know, you just never know when that big fish is going to eat. But I definitely believe that certain moons uh, will entice bigger fish to feed. Um, just like the rut for deer and deer season, there's certain moon phases that I feel really trigger uh, animals to feed up for winter or start preparing themselves for a different season. Do you ever look at the solar tables? Uh, no, I don't. You don't? Uh -uh. I used to, and I decided that they're full of poo. They don't really relate to the fish that I do. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you'll get to the, some of them have like five stars, best of season. You go out there, and all you do is sit back and drink beer. <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> I don't drink beer on the way. Just that's all, I, that's all I can come up with. <laughs> sit there and do nothing. We'll put it that way. Yeah. I mean, sitting back and drinking beer is not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. It's on the boat, though. Um, also, uh, one thing that I've seen on Facebook for you guys that are watching, um, the ACA has come up and posted some more stuff. You know, I, I talked to a lot of people about the ACA and what they're doing, and and I, I truly hope that it goes great and everybody comes on board. But I want to hear you guys' opinions, and uh, don't worry, you're not going to hurt my feelings. But uh, you know, drop your opinions in a nice manner, a nice manner. Um, in the comment section and let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, who was it? James Riggs? James Riggs? James Riggs? James Riggs wants to know what depth we're finding them and is there any current? No, no current to speak of and we're fishing in 38 feet right now. Yep, uh, so. 38 foot of water. Um, we're on a steep ledge. So Harley's side of the boat is on the shallow side of the ledge and he's in, you know, he's in about that's all the fish came out here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it, it rolls up. It, the ledge rolls up into a, a flat. And then it, there's another ledge as you get closer to the bank. But it'll roll up out of 38 foot to about 30 foot. And then it goes, continues down on my side of the boat out to about 50 foot. Uh, Bobby Parker wants to know if they got that dam fixed over the lake by he's talking about Tycoon Lake. No. I was out there about a week ago and it still looks it's like it's still under major construction. It's hard to tell what's going on now, but I have heard sometime maybe around the end of this month they'll be wrapping it up and putting some water back in it. I hope so. So uh, nice little lake, especially if you bass fish. Yeah, Tycoon is a huge bass lake and uh, it's a it's a good lake period, but uh, um, water temperature is about sixty eight degrees. It's cooled off about uh, six degrees uh, this in a, in a week's time. It was about 73, 74 last week. Hello to Nathan from Oklahoma. <laughs> All the animals here fishing from fishing with squirrels says muskrat. <laughs> I'm using making do catfishing. Howdy, partner. Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Oh, Tulsa also checking in. Howdy to you. All right. One of the, uh, a lot of questions I get, uh, I thought Harley was getting a bite, but then I realized that was, it. it was the boat moving. No, it's, that's the boat moving. That's no, probably a fish. No, it might, it, it might, might be. be a fish knowing me. So I get a lot of questions about what leader line I, I use. Um, so I, I always tell people there's, there's really three lines that I, that I like, I trust, and I have a lot of faith in. 
that is Berkeley Big Game, Andy Monster, and of course Slime Line. Um, the leader line I've been using lately is Slime Line Leader Line. This is 80 pound. This stuff is super good. I have come to have really, really high confidence in this line. Uh, they also have come out with an orange. Um, as you can see, the reels we got back here, it's the, the green color. But they've come out with an orange line that I've got a couple spools of, and I'm going to spool it up um, as soon as I need to change over line and try that out as well. I summon the fish! Well, my fishing partner has literally just lost his mind. That's better than yelling here, fishy, fishy, isn't it? Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. Let's <laughs> see if that old summon works up here. I thought we'd have a fish on by 10 minutes into the show, and we're already past 10 minutes. So. Are we? Yep, 12 minutes. We have any more questions? No, just a lot of chat right now. Uh, yeah. Somebody want to know if the fish were down in the mud. Last last one, we didn't. I didn't see any mud on them, did you? No. Um, last week, no, but I... <clears throat> Whenever we come across this little this ledge and we was son, uh, using the sonar back and forth looking um, at things, there was a lot of fish hanging right on the ledge. So I would I would say that we would have probably been better off dragon baits because there's no current. Um, but as much issue as we was having on last week's show with getting snagged up and stuff I thought this would be a better fit and it just more relaxing Charles Roberts asked does the fishing line color make any difference um, not in my opinion uh, and it's so and it, I guess I guess to answer that it's a couple different ways it doesn't make no difference to the fish um, unless you're in super clear water um, shallower water that sort of thing but now to me um, fishing wise it does when there's no current um, and, and I'm fishing really light weights I like to be able to see my lines at nighttime I want to be able to see my line and see what it's doing sometimes those fish will pick it up and start to move with it and a clear line is really hard to see especially at nighttime so in that instance it does matter a little bit uh, just visually but as far as fishing in the river, or deeper water, uh, absolutely not. Now, shallow water lakes and stuff like that, especially if you're going to be like a striper fishing, um, that then that does make a difference. I'm glad you can just talk and talk and talk because I, I run out of stuff to say. Oh, I could do this for hours. I know. I mean, especially since we're not catching fish. Yeah. We Harley need, picked this spot. We need to. Till, till we catch a fish or two, then it'll be like, I put us yeah. on those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's fish down there. We marked we marked a bunch of good fish, and we got good baits on. So with, with no more current, it might take them a minute to find stuff. Somebody asked earlier if, if rattles make much of a difference when there's no current. And, you know, they can't hurt. They, so, they still make a little noise occasionally. I, I wish... Um, I'll say this, I, I've, I've been lazy the last couple weeks, and that's, that's very unusual for me, especially when it comes to fishing. But last week, I, uh, I got lazy and, and, and didn't have live bait. Well, or not, not, I didn't cut up bait really small. I used big baits, even though I didn't, I knew better. And now this week I didn't put get live bait like I should have, and that is where those rattles make a difference. Um, no current situations, especially for flatheads. Yeah. Uh, rattles with live live bait, um, it does make a difference. But you know, they gonna see what that noise is. So who else is on here? Let's see. Have a look. What, is it somebody had a question about where to buy big spools of bait or big spools of fishing line? Um, wait a minute, is Earl Wilmington? Is that Car, is that Chris? Uh, no. He says. No. Uh, uh, so Earl Wilmington, you ask a question. Um, it says, "What trolling motor would you suggest for a 20-foot 
boat for old tater chip. So I look at it like this. You can never uh, overkill on a trolling motor, um, especially if there's current in the river. So I would suggest you go with a 112 uh, Trova and you're going to be extremely happy. Your batteries, your trolling motor is going to get you to safety if something was to happen to your big motor or get you if you was in trouble. And you can just do so many different things, whether you're fishing out of dam, uh, spillway, um, you know, just wanting to drift and, and your batteries to last longer, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, Tarova um, 112 is, is what I would suggest for that. So Chris, I got a subject for you. What is that? I was out with my other Chris buddy fishing the other day. And we both had two huge takedowns. We were fishing the big skipjacks. Yep. And the fish just turned them loose. You want to show everybody how to tie a double hook rig where you can get uh, two hooks in a line and yeah, drag out something because that, that's a really good thing to have in your uh, arsenal because uh, Chris and I both we had huge takedowns and hello um hi there so wade chambers asked a question i want to answer before it gets uh, too far away yeah the uh, the spot lock will hold us you know in an area or in the spot that we're we're at um it works a little bit better if you have current if you don't have current, then the back of the boat can kind of swing more freely. If you have a little bit of, if you have some current or current, you can put out drift socks and the trolling motor has to work a little bit harder to keep you where you need to be. And that what works out a little bit better. I'm gonna put you to work though, because we talked about this earlier. Yeah. And uh, I wanna see it in action, actually how you do it. Do you, uh, slip Really prepared for this, I kind of put Chris on the spot and I apologize, but you know, give him something to do since the fish are biting. All right, so uh, Harley was and and somebody else too. Uh, here you go, Chris Wellington. Make sure, yeah, I think okay. so. <clears throat> they're wanting Harley's wanting me to show him how to do a double hook rig for big baits because what happened to us, I figure, is the fish came up, bit the bait. <laughs> And it's a big six, seven inch piece of bait. And I think he just bit it right in the middle and didn't have it all in his mouth. And he hung on, both of us, we had the fish on for about 15, 20 seconds and just like, oh my gosh, got a big one, big one. And all of a sudden just plow, let it go. And I think it was a great big old blue that just had it by the tail and was hanging on. So what Harley's meaning is they had it hooked here yep. through the nose and you know, like a, a larger piece of bait like this and the fish just come up and grabbed the bait and took off with it, but never had the hook in its mouth. And this will kind of remedy that. Let's see your towel. Oh, never mind. Here. We need a fish about now. All right, so first off, you want to cut you a piece of leader line. And that will depend on, you know, whatever size you want. Um, I mean, it doesn't need to be real big. <laughs> Roger wants you to do a drawing. <laughs> The drawings are coming. Just run the, run it, I guess like this. You'll the first hook, you from the front to the back, just like that. You'll wrap it seven times, and then we'll bring the line back through the back to the front. Yeah, you pull can, that down. You can actually, get even closer, Chris. Okay, so. <clears throat> then we take the we'll take the second hook and we'll take the leader line from the back to the front 
We'll pull it down. Now this will depend on how big of a piece of bait you want. Uh, one thing I do recommend is to always offset these hooks. So one down and one up, okay? Whether it be like this or, or you can also, I mean, you can do both of them up. And for this, I guess for this one, we'll do both of them up and I'll show you how to hook it into bait too. So that's about, we'll make it about uh, six, seven inches. And then we'll just make a snail seven times from the back to the front. And now you have a double hook rig for one piece of bait, okay? Betty Jane Cross says, hey, Chris Outers. Hello, Betty. So the top hook, this, is the, this will be the bottom hook down here, and this will be the top hook. The top hook will go in the head, just like you normally hook a headpiece, okay? Now for anybody that's a bass fisherman, you'll kind of understand this a little bit better than most. You'll want to bring the hook kind of in line with the bait. And you don't want to bring it too far back. You want to give yourself enough room, enough with this line length that you have. Oh. <laughs> and Harley's got a fish on. You bring that down, and you want to get keep it as straight as you possibly can in the bait. And that's how it should sit when you're done, just like that. We got Harley, a pre-barge bite. <laughs> we'll take him. Yeah. We'll take him. Ooh. Swimming at me. I knew if I got you distracted there, showing how tight knots and everything. I can't. Right. I can't. Always taking my fish. Y'all busy trying to be a YouTuber. I'm busy fishing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, that's not too bad. How long have we been on there? That's a big old bass. Is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose it. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice flathead there. There we go. I mean, not huge, but oh, nice. Good yeah, boy. So there you go. Good way to start tonight. Heck yeah. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I feel like I'm on a daggone charger that's, or something there. That's what he there ate. Go. Guys Skip go Jack. Hit, hit print screen there and take a picture of this big old beauty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, 10 pounder. Yeah, nice Good fish. Boy. Go get bigger. When they do that. I was going to rehook it. Throw back out there. Whew. Now that's a uh, that's just a regular three-way style rig. <clears throat> I do have a, a swivel in the center here. That's not something you have to have. I just kind of modified a, a rig that I had pre-tied up. So next time I'll ask Chris how to do something else and get him here in front oh, of the camera. Harley, for... What? You left the bell undone. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. He's really upset because I caught a fish and he did. And he gets <laughs> like this all the time. Y'all don't get to see it when he's when he's here in the show with, by himself. Well, once you get out here and you get him unexpected, he gets all ornery. Yeah, if you're if you're taking off a fish for me or whatever, I'm leaving the bell open. I don't want you to get. Down to the middle. Oh, what's this? Nice. You missed that other boat right next to me. That's pro right there. <laughs> that is pro. All right. One in the books. Boom. Booyah. <laughs> Michael Langford asked, do fish really bite better after a barge passes? I missed it. 
I don't know if they do. It just gives us something to talk about. So that's a good question, and it's something that I believe in a lot. So what I believe is that kind of stirs the bottom and disrupts the fish, and they have to move. That's my... But they, they do bite better when Chris is up here in the camera showing you how to tie knots. <laughs> they seem to bite pretty good. Man, that light's bright. And actually, we got pretty good light on the show right now. Do we? Yep. Any more questions? Uh, Ricky Taylor, how deep? 38 feet, Ricky. Now, that fish that Harley caught actually come out of uh, some deeper yeah, water, probably 45, 45 or so. <clears throat> See, we set up on this ledge, Chris, all his lines are over in the deeper stuff where they're coming from. I'm having to fish over here, and if he's up there talking on the phone or something, I ain't above jumping off hole over there and cranking them in, baby. And if you guys have any more rigs that you guys want to see, you know, while we're doing these shows, uh, just let me know. <laughs> What's your favorite month to fish, E.E. -E asks. Uh, my, my favorite month? Yeah. Months, whatever. Uh, so my favorite month, month, month yeah. would probably be May. Uh, my favorite months would, and I guess it would kind of depend on the on the fish too. Uh, for blue cats, it's I like winter. Um, for flatheads, I like spring. Um, and the reason I like winter for, for winter fishing for uh, blue cats is you don't see a lot of people out. Um, it's yeah. you kind of come out here to the river and and or to the lake or wherever you go, and you know there's not a lot of people. Um, okay, let's see here. All your rods are the same. What action are you using? These are the uh, Warrior Cat heavy action. Uh, they're all the same that we got out here tonight. Um, I would. I would have probably rather had the medium heavies tonight, uh, but I was undecided on whether we'd be dragging. Um, I like the heavy action for dragging, but for anchor fishing, I kind of like the medium heavies. I'm, I'm starting to like the a little bit lighter. Yeah. Yeah. The medium heavies, they, you know, the, the fish doesn't feel it. You know, when there's zero to no current, the fish really seem to feel things a lot easier or uh, they they it affects them more so a heavier action rod will cause them to throw a throw a bait out a heavy sinker will cause them to throw a bait out uh, things like that <laughs> larry king jr had a comment but i'm not going to repeat it <laughs> no actually he said you need someone with you don't steal your fish <laughs> that's exactly right eh, whatever <laughs> Chris would have done the same for me. Yeah, he would. That's, I ain't about what, taking his fish. That's what fishing buddies are about. You got to make sure you get those fish in the boat. I got big elbows. I'm knocking <laughs> out the way. I summoned them up. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me I'm crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> okay, but I did summon them up. Yeah! Yeah! Come on, fish! Well, now the fishing's over. He scared him. I'm going to take one. We got some fish moving right underneath the boat. I'm going to take one and just put it right underneath the boat. Okay. Hello, Mike Greenwell. What the catfish do when lakes start turning over? Ooh. Yeah, they, they don't get real predictable. And a lot of times. You got to talk time, to the camera. Huh? Oh. You got to talk to the camera. Well, okay. So they don't get real predictable when that starts happening. I mean, it's just like any time the change in the weather or water conditions and things like that, it, it varies. You're gonna have you're gonna have times when you know what they're doing, but when when lakes turn on, we don't. I don't do a lot of uh, lake fishing. And, and we fish the Ohio Lake here in the fall when there's no, and I mean by the Ohio River, if you don't get what I'm talking about. Um, but you get them like with the thermocline, and I'm I'm actually not an authority on when they turn over. Is that when? What, what, what does that mean? When the temperatures meet. When they meet and the thermocline, does the thermocline go away and everything mixes back well, up? Or? So everything on the bottom comes to the top. It's a, it's a nasty, nasty time. Um, you'll have a lot, a lot of times you'll have a big fish kill. Um, 
you know, and fishing is really horrible for everything normally around that time. Is light still good? Yeah, light's, light's great. Good, good. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> What's the best way to keep skip, skipjack fresh from Alabama to Ohio? Drive fast. <laughs> try, try plenty of ice, too. So, um, one thing I would say is if you're going to Alabama and you're going to catch skipjack, drop them into a uh, slurry, an ice salt solution slurry uh, to kind of kill them quick and kind of stun them. Gets everything nice and cold on the inside. And then don't let them sit in there very long. Keep, you know, I, I usually like to take mine out after about um, 10 minutes or so and then pack them, layer them uh, belly up in ice, real nice and neat. And uh, but now, if you don't want to go all the way to Alabama to catch skipjack, get a hold of uh, regular dude fishing, Joe, uh, Jay Newell, or John, John. Newell, <laughs> Jay Newell. That's his, his Jay old Newell YouTube. Zero. Yeah. But uh, he makes he normally makes a trip every week, and he takes care of his bait pretty good, and um, you know sells them pretty reasonable. Yeah, so. you might need to get a hold of him pretty quick because he's about ready to hang it up for the season now, getting ready to hunker down for the winter. I talked to him the other day. But, uh, Another bait dealer would also be Big Cat Bait Company. Uh, Carl Morse and his gang, they do an awesome job as well. Uh, Nicholas James Vavercheck, I guess. Hope I don't murder your name too bad. He says, hey, Chris, good to see you and Harley out on the water again. What are the rod holders on the back on each side of the motor? That is called a multi-bar. Um, so uh, the gentleman's name... I, I wish I could remember um, easily, but I believe it's Colton um, that makes them. They're called multi bars. Um, I'm not a big fan of the rod racks or the straight T bars. Um, you know, I'm more of a fan of getting as much space out of the back of the boat as you possibly can. So I figured I would try these. Uh, they are extremely well built. Uh, you won't find something stronger than these. These are extremely, extremely strong. Um, they're 40 pounds for the pair, uh, put together with stainless steel hardware. Um, I'm not sure uh, they're powder coated. I'm not sure about the thickness of all the metal, but inch to half inch stuff. That's like one inch. Yeah. The top bars like one inch, and then half inch on the side bars. Yeah. Um, the sides are aluminum. Uh, uh, help me out here, Harley. Um, yeah. Fishing and Stuff actually has a video, Keith from Fishing and Stuff actually has a video, uh, if you guys go back and look through his, his list or maybe contact him, um, he will, uh, he's got a, play li a list or a video showing how to make them and um, what materials and all that stuff and, and also get a hold of uh, multi-bar. You know, they're 375 a pair shipped and uh, like I said, they're good, they're good. Uh, um, I'm still, still working with them and trying to adjust them. They got a lot of adjustment, and uh, trying to position them where I like them. So, here's an interesting question. Betty Jean Cross asks, "What's the best rig to use while fishing a Category Five hurricane?" I'll take this one. That'd be a scuba rig, Betty. <laughs> a scuba rig. A scuba rig. <laughs> yeah, uh, Betty. I, uh, I tell you, I was watching that today and thinking about you all. And uh, how you guys were, were going to be there. And I looked at it. It looks like you guys will be able to fish Saturday. But uh, I'm telling you, that's not a lake you want to be on when that weather gets turns bad. So be careful. <laughs> be very, very careful. <laughs> Caddyshack's got a cool name. C-A-T-T-Y. Caddyshack. Caddyshack. That's I pretty, like that. That's a cool name. Uh, let's see here. Ruby says, have you heard of the Smackdown rod holders? Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, uh, um, help me out again, what's his name, Stacey, uh, Stacey, Stacey Gaston, Gaston. Uh, super good dude, uh, uh, Christian, um, I believe he was a pastor, or is a pastor, um, you know, uh, a super good dude, and his rod holders are, are good, uh, I'm sure, I, I haven't used them personally, but I would say that they, they are good. Jason Huggins wants to know why you prefer the meat, or prefer the heavy over the medium heavy when you're dragging. Uh, so, uh, Jason, good question, and, and the reason I prefer the heavy over the medium heavy is 
there's enough action, enough play in the medium or in the heavy <clears throat> to uh, not pull down so much, get out of snags, and still yet the planer boards can kind of let them bring them back slow, not whip them back. Uh, but there's enough power that they will actually, you know, not snap the clip on the planer board, but yet pull the dragon weights up out of out of brush and structure. So there's like a happy medium uh, with that to where kind of like the medium heavies really get pulled down a lot and then they will almost snap back uh, too quickly uh, where they're getting pulled down so much. And uh, by the way, Roger just posted, Muskrat Adventure just posted a link to Keith's video and they're talking about the multi bars. Oh, thank you, you thank you. All right. I'm gonna have to go back here and do a summon again here. Are oh, yeah? you? Yeah. How long have we been on here? Uh, 37 minutes. 37 minutes. Is there any more questions? Just about the time when I ready to go here. Do, 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 do. do you guys do much dragon bait at night? Yeah. I, I don't fish a lot at night uh, just because of the dangers on the river, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, and while we're at it, I've got one of those nighttime night view scopes and I've been actually thinking about putting that on my boat has anybody ever done that on their boat or ever use it at night because I've had a, I've had a couple close calls on the river in the last couple of years frankly it's getting scary and I'm gonna put that on my boat next time I go out and have a look around because if, if you do spend much time on the river you know a daggone barge will sneak right up on you and, and you can't even see him a lot of times so I think I'm gonna try my uh, I think it's infrared I don't know if that'd do much good unless you could like see the engine I mean, anything's better than nothing. You never know. It's man, it gets dangerous out here at night. So, it does. if a little tip for you guys, if you are going to drag at night, if you're using the offshore, you can put the planer or the uh, flag up, and then <clears throat> zip tie or tape a a uh, uh, little light to it that you can get at the dollar store. You know, what are those called? I'm sorry, I was reading. I didn't the little even... the little stick lights you buy at the dollar store. Oh, glow sticks. Calumine light sticks. Uh, glow sticks but yeah. uh, you can do that or lightning bug actually makes one that's uh, on tubing and you can pop a hole you know in your in the top of your board and it would stick down in it and then you know of course use the lightning bugs that we sometimes use um, at night time fishing <laughs> it, it's show off time Roger asked what light ring are we using and do you recommend it I think he's probably talking about your little LED light up there yeah yeah I don't know what that one is, but I want to show you something. I'm, <laughs> I brought my light tonight. You want to reach up there and turn that thing on? This is my this is my studio light that you can get. The other way. Did it help? <laughs> <laughs> I believe so. So yeah, there's that one. Um, so the little light that I got um, that mounts to the camera is just a. Uh, takes two double A batteries. You can buy them off Amazon. They're little, they're like a little four by four square. Um, I was getting a bite, wasn't we? Uh, it looks like it is right here. I'll get it. <laughs> yep. You want to get one? Oh, wait. Just stand still. Stand still? Yeah, don't move. No boogie. Just that. <laughs> I don't, got a boogie. Don't break a leg <laughs> or a hip. Now we're moving sideways. Now this is the bad part about spot locking. Uh, we got a little gust of wind kind of coming up river and it's wanting to push us, yeah. push the back of the boat <laughs> up river. No, I, I think we got a little bite going on there actually. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, what's the studio light? Yeah, that, that's actually a studio light. I'm kind of getting into photography a little bit, and you you can pick this light up. It's got like I think 600 LEDs in it, and it's it's dimmable in color. It's it's a newer brand, and you can find them on uh, Amazon. They're they're about 108 dollars or so, and you can change you can change the temperature of the light and the dim and all that good stuff. That fish, there's a fish bite in there. Well, and uh, actually, it has battery packs on it that you can get the battery packs for like 40 bucks for two of them. And I think they'll uh, run for about an hour. Let him go. Let him go. Yep, 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 yep. You get him or am I? Well, I'm here. That's bad when you got to beg somebody to get a fish. 
If you miss this fish, Harley. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's just chewing and chewing. That's like a doggone turtle or something. Uh, I've tried to teach Harley for years that, that fish don't have pockets. No, they don't. He is chomping. I'm just going to go ahead and crank on him. Let's wait. He stopped. Let's wait. Come on, fishy, fishy. Boy, he's jacking So this fish, just... this fish has a pocket that he has put the bait into, and he's going <laughs> to... You get him? Yes. <laughs> Whew. About time. We got there, channel cat. You wanna reel it in? <laughs> <laughs> Can I please? <laughs> yeah, get up here. I'll take your picture while you're doing it. It'll be great. <laughs> that bit like a flathead. It did. Yeah, just chew and chew and chew. Man, this, is this the most don't fish we've ever caught on a live broadcast? I don't know. I'll take this one over here. <laughs> That's a nice little flathead. That is. You probably got a decent one. Wait, well, gentlemen. We're happy. <laughs> we got a fishing show. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> we went fishing, caught a fish, we went for a fishing show. Yeah. On these live shows, you just never know what's going to happen. Nope. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, it's it's fun. It's un it's real, uncut, uncensored live action. <laughs> uncensored I live like it. action catfish catching. You got a better oh. one, don't you? He's digging. He's digging. He ain't pulling drag, but he's trying to dig. <laughs> And that came on that piece of... No, it didn't come on Chad. Well, yeah, I don't know what you no, had on that. That was Skipjack. Was it? Yep. Oh, man. Now, these are heavy action rods, but they got a lot of play, you know, in them. Um, I've always said the reason I really love these Warrior Cat rods is they bend, you know, it's called a parabolical bend, and it bends all the way through the rod. And I, I just really like that. A lot of people don't like it, but... Uh, to me, it allows me and people who fish with me or people I take. That's a nice fish. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's that I take mine. to make mistakes and get away with it. That's bigger than mine. Shoot, man, we ought to get them both up here together and get a thumbnail, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Photo op, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, you know we're having fun when we're catching fish like this and get them, getting doubled up. And... The other night, last Tuesday, when we were broadcasting, as soon as we got off, they started biting like this, right here in this little area, right, right off this bluff here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, that is a nice one, man. That's he's a twenty pounder or so. Yeah, he's a nice fish. That is a nice fish. And you notice they're all coming off that side of the boat. <laughs> there we go. America, America, <laughs> baby. America. <laughs> nice. That's just weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, Harley, I yep. tell you what, you let that one go. Yeah. I'm oh, gonna he give got him, a little He got a little mud on his belly right there, so I'm gonna put a big M on there for muskrat and let him go. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm gonna give you guys one last look at this one. And uh yeah, I'm gonna let him go. And I think we're gonna call it right there. <laughs> call it right there. It's been a good night, good show, a lot of information. And we caught some nice fish, so so we're happy boys yeah thank you guys for watching make sure we're gonna do it again next week we got some guests lined up and uh let's have some fun we'll see you guys later <laughs> peace out and bye bye everyone boom booyah